You may also be able to see the damage caused by Cromwell's army during the Siege of York in 1644, when cannon were sighted on Laval Hill to bombard the city. The Roundheads knew that they couldn't break through the gates and tried to tunnel under the Barbican instead, but they were discovered and failed to get in. This stretch of the city wall was the last to be built because the river Foss and the king's fish pond were thought to be sufficient defence. The mound and ditch were built about 1215, and the stone wall added about 10 years later. This is where York's cattle market was, from 1827 until the 1960s, when it moved again to Merton, outside the city. For over 120 years, Irish cattle were shipped to Holyhead, then brought by train to York, before being herded through the streets from the railway depots. As we pass the Barbican complex and turn left into Fawcett Street, look to your right to see Fishergate Bar, one of the city's minor gateways. This was the site of an anti poll tax riot in 1489 when houses near the bar were burnt. Just two years before that, Lord Mayor William Todd had the city wall here repaired at his own expense, so it was hardly surprising that the bar was then bricked up. It Fishergate is the road to Fulford, site of the battle which the Norwegians Harald Hadrada and Tostig won in 1066. They were then defeated by the English king Harold Godwinson at Stamford Bridge, 10 miles away, after which Harold himself set off to meet his end at the Battle of Hastings. As we turn to Fishergate itself, you will have a view of York Minster straight ahead which shows that the cathedral is the highest building in York. Local planning regulations ban the construction of tower blocks, so the Minster stands out above the rest of the city. The first cathedral church of St. Peter was built on the site of the old Roman fortress in 627 AD, and the present Minster is the fourth on the site. The first three cathedrals were destroyed by fire, one of them in 1069, when William the Conqueror's army burnt York to the ground. And even this minster has had three serious fires, in 1829, 1840, and most recently, in 1984. The fire in 1829 led to the formation of the Minster Police, one of the earliest police forces in England, and still in existence. Across Castle Mills Bridge again, you will see the Foss Basin on the left. The two rivers meet just below the near floodgate, which looks like a glass bridge and can be closed to prevent flooding in the city centre. The area between the rivers is St George's Field, where an ancient bylaw gives the citizens of York the right to walk, shoot with bows and arrows, and dry linen. We continue onto Skeldergate Bridge and cross the larger of York's two rivers, the Ouse. This bridge was built with an opening span to allow sailing ships to reach the wharves. On the right, 
you will see Ooms Bridge, which was built in 1820 to replace an earlier bridge. The stretch of river between these bridges was the old port of York and was the loading point for ships and barges from Viking times until the 1900s. As we leave Skeldergate Bridge, we pick up the city walls again, on the right at Vale Hill, once the site of the second defensive mound, built by the Danes and fortified by William the Conqueror. In fact, the city walls you see today were built in the reign of King Henry III in the early 1220s. They replaced wooden stockades, and the mounds on which the walls stand were erected by the Danes about 900 AD. In Clementhorpe, on the left, Terry's Chocolate Factory was built on the riverbank. Such was the rivalry between the two big chocolate makers that Roundtree's bought the land next to Terry's and presented it to the city as a public park, Roundtree Park.